from the beginning to date is Satan. That is why as bad as Satan is and as evil as he is, God still told you to register in his school to be as wise 
as Satan. For God to tell you to go and register in the school, so as Satan will teach you wisdom. That is the height of God's explanation of the supremacy of the wisdom of Satan. Mm. He didn't say powerful. Oh, you didn't get me. Ah. <laughs> because he took all his power. The devil has wisdom because he has stayed with God longer than any other creature has stayed with God. And look at his submission to Jesus. He said, I know you came from heaven to come and receive back all that you lost. Your child lost, Adam. You came to recover all. I am aware. Your coming is no secret to me. But why will you embarrass yourself in this terrible nature to be beaten Strip naked, embarrassed, no pants, no singlet, parabolated through the streets of Jerusalem and nailed to the cross. Why will you suffer like that when there is a simpler way to get it? If you are wise, you know that you don't use a difficult method when there is an alternative, simpler method. You know, I've been with you. How did I get my power? Did I do sacrifice? Did I do sacrifice? Did I share blood? Jesus, you know now. Did I, to, did I share blood to get all the power I got that the whole world is threatened by my power? You should know how I got it. So let me, let me, let me tutor you. Since you are on my, on my world now, you have left heaven. You are not there. I can't go there. But you are my word. I will teach you the strategy. How did I get it? Was I praying? Jesus, I'm sorry, Jesus said no. Was I preaching? What did I do to get all the power I took from you? He said, worship. So now you should know how to get everything you are looking for. Bow down and worship me. And all the glory of the kingdom. Shut. See, there are five things you must master in this conference. Mastery of the act of worship. I'm going to give you five things you must master. If this conference cannot make you a master of this, you didn't come to this conference. I didn't say just hearing about it. I say master. It means it is possessing you. It means it has become your lifestyle. It means it has become your lifestyle. It means it's a controller of, of who you are. It means it defines you. Please, let worship become your definition. And the, the devil was tutoring Jesus. Why? Because Jesus entered his domain. Remember, you are strongest in your ecology. Heaven belongs to God, so God is stronger there. But remember, as at the time he was tempting Jesus, the devil is the strongest man because the devil has taken the earth over from Adam legitimately. So he is the controller. So he is the one, he is the controller here. And Jesus knew that. So the controller of the earth, of course, Jesus called him the prince of this world. So you should know when, when heaven accredits a man. You can't deny his accreditation. The devil ruled until you came. Your coming on board was what defeated his rulership. I'm coming to there. If this conference do not change you, you will never change again. You can't change again. If this conference do not change you, you can never change. But I know it will change you. Yeah. He said, bow down and worship me. And all that I showed you just now, the glory of the whole world. Somebody say glory. Glory. 
Now, of course, you should know the history of that word that it came from what was lost. All have sinned and come short of what? The glory. So it is glory that was lost. That's what Jesus came to restore. You don't look for what is not missing. Oh. The reason why he came was to restore the glory that was lost. So if you can manifest glory, your redemption is questionable. Because the reason why he came to bring redemption was to restore glory. So if you are born again and you cannot manifest glory, you are fake. Your salvation is questionable. But I declare in the name of the Lord, for everyone participating in this conference, you will have glory to show. Amen. 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 You 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 have glory to show. Amen. Glory is from a Greek word, doxa, which means all that God is and all that God has. It can be departmentalized into three. It means character. It means prosperity. It means supernatural display of power. And these three things will become your property before you live here. Amen. Have your seat. Somebody say glory. 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 If glory do not show, you didn't meet him. No, you didn't see him. For everyone that has an encounter with divinity is obvious in glory. That's why he told you in the book of 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. As we behold him, we are transformed to the same image from glory to glory. So you see, it is an issue of glory. Just that the dimension of glory varies between one person and the other. But one thing is definite. When you have an encounter with divinity, what must manifest? Oh, talk to me. What must manifest? Glory. Now you have to pin your leg on the ground. I came here to take glory. Nothing else. No, it means the expiration of shame. Shame must expire. It means any area where you have been deficient, where we are, you are a ridicule, where you are an embarrassment to redemption, it means it comes to an end so that glory can manifest. Amen. The two don't go together. It's like light and darkness. Light and darkness don't stay together. The entrance of one leads to the departure of the other. When light comes, darkness departs. Yes, I declare upon someone here huh. that the arrival of his glory in this conference hey. we send away your shame. Amen. 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 Your shame in poverty will be sent away. Amen. Your shame in character deficiency will be sent away. Amen. Your shame in powerlessness will be sent away. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are going to rise in your face and declare my encounter with this conference. I'm waiting for you to say it before you bust. 
My encounter with the God of this conference. My encounter with the God of this conference. We send away. We send away the shame of poverty. The shame of poverty. The shame of character deficiency. The shame of character deficiency. The shame of powerlessness. The shame of powerlessness. Open your mouth and pray. Rabada takada. Make a decree. Two great brother takes the mark. Make a decree. Le brabadon satali. Make a decree. La kabosa kota. Make a decree. Enta la baroko kota. Make a decree. Si kando li pare. Make a decree. In the name of Jesus, we brought them here. We send them away, out of our life. In this very conference, poverty will disappear. Contradictions will disappear. Powerlessness will disappear. Glory for the faithful. Let the rebrand and echo. Zu rebrete le gato, la brada don sopra, rima na na sadaye, zu prebonto la manena, ikle de de bolo sota, ikle de purande ake, in the name of Jesus, she must go, poverty must go, the God of the conflict must of Jesus, amen. The, 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 the wife of the prophet came to meet another prophet, to say, man of God, my husband was like you. But he died a debtor. A prophet by excellence. He commanded information. Everyone knew he was a prophet. But he died without money. What an embarrassment to your calling. Anointed but poor. Mm. It's a shame. But he's going to expire in this conference. Amen. Let me tell you, there is no way you can move beyond your present locality of expression of your calling without M O N E Y. Now, you, of course, you know my my antecedents that I don't stay in one level for too long. I move. It's in my DNA. When I lay hand on you tomorrow, that's one thing I will speak into your life. I hope you, are know, you know that I'm a guest speaker here. I have left. I'm in London now. Yes, sir. No, no, I don't stay in one place. No. Woo. I, don't, I don't know how God does it. Oh. He just moves me. By the time I lay hand on you, you will not remain in your yesterday. Hey. No, I didn't want to go there. But let me know. Now, for you to be in London, you need to have money. Now, let me just quote some statistics to you. My house rent for a year, not for my house rent for a year. Now, is 2,000 and some hundreds of pounds for one month. A thousand pounds now is almost one million. So, I pay about two million for my rent for one month. Times 12, please, two times 12. 24 million just for my rent. Hold on, hold on. We have not built any church hall. We have to rent. The rent of the hall is $2,000 $2, plus 1,000 expenses surrounding the church. 3,000. Now, 3,000 times 12. 36 plus 24. 60. So, if for me to have left Benin, I needed to have 60 million to move to my next location. Can poverty move you like that? No, sir. That's what I'm saying. The reason why you are not in your next level, ha. money has not come. Hey. But because of this conference, uh -huh. money is coming. Hey. Amen. Hey. Ah. Yes, sir. Many of you, you know where God said is your next level. You saw it by vision. You listen, money is the interpreter of vision. You can put it down. Money, without money, your dream is fake. Your vision is a lie. Until money comes, vision does not speak. I declare in this conference, Kuparate Kobin Kamamantatwa. The glory of God that we manifest here will remove your shame of poverty. Now you are going to be militant. You are going to be aggressive. Lord, I came here to encounter glory. Ah. I came here to encounter the glory that will chase away the shame of poverty. Ah. 
Now, take it one by one. Take it one by one. The glory that will chase away what? The shame of poverty. poverty. I told you, glory chases away shame. Yes, sir. In any area you are still experiencing shame, it's because glory has not arrived. Darkness continues to exist until the arrival of light. So I'm going to give you three minutes of serious aggression, a holy anger. Lord, I came here to contact glory. The glory that will chase away the shame of poverty. You must go. By the fact of this conference, I will not be counted among the poor minister. Amen. No, Amen. no, I will not be among the poor pastors. Yes, sir. Amen. I will not be among the poor ministers. Amen. Can I hear the loudest? Amen. 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 When you hear a prophecy, you say it again. I told you before, over and over. In our kingdom, prophecies do not work itself. The potency of prophecy is when the recipient becomes the prophet of the prophecy. Until you take what was said by a prophet and then you meditatively believe it and say it as if you believe it. It doesn't work. I say it again. The potency of prophecy. That's why the Bible has been with you. The promises do not work. It doesn't work like that. Until you take it, meditate it, believe it, and say it. Why must you meditate it? In the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That abundance is a function of meditation. That you meditate on what was said to the excitement, to your excitement that you will not know when you say it now as if you are the prophet. I said the glory you will encounter here will chase away the shame of your poverty. Amen. Amen. One testimony that every person must share here before we see another conference is a pastor. I used to be poor. But after the 2022 conference, money they flow now. Amen. Now, I already have many examples. People are already sharing testimony. Somebody just sent me a message, Daddy, permit me to, to thank God next Sunday with uh, one million. It's my member. Not, we don't invite guest speaker like that. It's my member. Because when, when I met you, I was poor. I was even jobless. I didn't have a job. But my counter, my counter, I want to thank God on Sunday with one million. Do you permit me? I said, no. The church account. I, I quickly phoned the administrator. This, he will bring his check on Sunday. Somebody whose account is one million cannot give one million. You should know now you are an African. Can an African, African, Niger, no, leave Africa, a Nigerian. Can a Nigerian who has only one million give one million as Thanksgiving seed? You should know some, something is left. Many millions are left. That will be your portion before next year. Amen. Amen. That, that's my member. Now, I don't know whether this, this, uh, this, this is Pastor Joe here. Prophet Joe. Prophet Joe from Ekoma. <laughs> now, when it comes tomorrow, we'll show you. It was a prophet begging, no money, trekking. And he had an encounter with me just once. As he went back, somebody bought him a machine. He came again for another encounter. Somebody bought him Mercedes one night. The third time he came, as he went back home, somebody bought him a Lexus, huh? Lexus, Lexus Jeep. Uh, now, he just sent me an SMS now. Read it for me. Look for it. You, you cannot go back and come and meet me next year the same way. Amen. No, it's not possible. Read it. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. 
My name is Prophet Joe. My, my name is Prophet Joe. From Ekoma. From Ekoma. I am the one who shared testimony during Ekoma Crusade. Thank you. I am building more houses since when I met you. He's now building houses since he met me. A I, man who was a tenant, trekking, is now building not one house. He's building houses. More house. I am now a rich pastor in Ekoma. I'm now a rich pastor in Ekoma. Your name is leaving that list. Oh. Amen. The list of poverty. Your name is leaving that list. Amen. Amen. When they are calling poor pastor, poor pastor, your name is leaving that list. Amen. Amen. Now, I hope you know I'm a long range preacher. I don't stop small. Are you ready for long range ministry? Because I won't stop until two o'clock. Now, now, if you're having problem, me. I have few months to celebrate 70 years. Yeah. If I'm preaching and I'm strong, I stay for hours. You that is not yet 70, if you are complaining, you should go for medical examination. You should be sick. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. Pray like somebody who, who know I came here for business. The glory I will encounter in this conference will chase away the shame of poverty in my life. Amen. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Number one. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. The glory oh. we encounter the glory, in this conference we will we we chase away conference. poverty exactly. out of we our lives forever. 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 In the mighty name the, of the Jesus, Lord. the glory we will encounter the, here the, in this very right conference. We chase the glory of this conference. We chase away. 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 We chase
I told you any prophecy, you must say it again. Not just amen. Amen is not it. Before I depart from this earth, after finishing my assignment, ah. they will know that rich pastor, that rich pastor, that rich pastor has gone to glory. Open your mouth. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Before I depart. From this earth, they will see me as a rich minister of God, a rich pastor, a rich minister. In the name of Jesus, oh my God, that I am a rich pastor, oh my God, that I am a rich pastor, oh God. If I depart from this earth, oh God, I will be counted, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then Elisha. Ask her, madam, what do you have? He said, nothing. Now, the woman was disappointed because she came to a man of God expecting the man of God to give her money. I've already told you, don't meet a man of God with a monetary intention. It will block the grace he carries from working for you. Don't ever put in your mouth to ask for money from a man sent by God. Don't. The day you open your mouth to beg him for money, the grace he carried to prosper you will block. Did you see anywhere in the Bible where somebody asked Jesus for money? Of all the story they wrote about Jesus, not one, because it's not a part of our kingdom. Then Elisha now said, do you have anything left? He said, nothing. He said, no, there must be something. The devil do not have the capacity to take all. No, he doesn't. Something must be left. And until you appreciate what is left, you will not have the rest from God. So, it doesn't matter the damage the devil did. Look for what is left and dance around it. I said again, this is a misery that has defeated many. Why? They cry, 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 and God refused to answer. You know why? They are crying over the losses when they are supposed to be dancing over what is left. When they are supposed to be appreciating God for what is left. I told you just now, worship is the key. There was no bread in the wilderness. Jesus looked at what was left and he worshipped the Father for what is left, not what is lost. Don't let what the devil stole take your heart. Anything you cannot recover by your human effort does not deserve your meditation. What did I say? Anything you cannot recover by your human effort does not deserve your meditation. Don't think about it. It will destroy your mind. Mm -mm. There are issues about your life and ministry now which you cannot recover. Your thinking about it is destroying your future. Leave it Tell God about the loss and remove your mind. Focus on what is left and begin to celebrate God for what is left. It is what is left that is celebrated that he uses to provide the rest. So until he sees you rejoicing over what is left. If you, like, I told you a story before about my my mother in the Lord, we turned, we learned how to pray. Who were going to our house to pray. And uh, the child died. All of us were surprised because the woman is a mighty prophetess. She sees, she hears, she knows the wind and the direction of God. So we we're, were quarreling. How can Mama be here? That Mama was so fantastic that if she goes out on evangelism, and rain is falling, she walks through the rain, and rain will not touch her. I like that dimension of proving that you are not ordinary. 
we are too ordinary to be believed. People have not seen any extraordinariness in your calling. That's what this conference wants to address. That when you live here, they begin to see supernaturality. When they see you, they remember your supernaturality. You are too ordinary to be classified as a man sent by God. So we are wondering why the woman should lose a child. And uh, as we were wondering, she was also wondering that God didn't tell her. And the woman cried, cried, cried. Then the second one died. Ah! Yeah! All of us cried. She cried. As she was crying, the third one died. In our midst. Then Mama now went to God for inquiry. God, what is happening? The Lord now showed her a vision. Uh -uh. See what God just told me now. He said, just like praises and worship is my food of sustenance, in quote. So also is your crying weeping and tears the sustenance of the devil it keeps the devil alive so he's anxious to make you cry to keep him alive the strength of the devil is deduced from your tears so the more tears you share when they now find out that you are always the hissing type for every you do you just provided the devil with salad for every grumbling and murmuring, you have just put rice, fried rice with chicken on the table of the devil. It is the strength of Satan. That's why he goes about to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Because that is where he gets his food. Because for God, your jubilation is what strengthens him for performance. Your jubilation is what fuels his capacity as divinity. Your rejoicing is what encourages him to do again while you are rejoicing. As it is for God for rejoicing, so it is for the devil for your sorrow. So if the devil sees you as a popular agent of sorrow, he comes close to you to make you give him food again. May you not feed the devil. Amen. For every sorrow, you are feeding the devil. He becomes more powerful. For every crying, you are feeding the devil. For every murmuring, you are feeding the devil. That's why God admonishes us. Rejoice! I say, rejoice. Will God encourage somebody who has everything to rejoice? No. Will God encourage somebody who is having successes to rejoice? No. He's talking about those who have a reason to cry. He's talking to people who have a reason to be grumbling, to murmur, to complain. He's begging you. The secret is rejoice. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look real. But in our kingdom, it is joy that defeats sorrow. Huh? Yes. So, Mama now begged the woman. Don't cry again. She now began to celebrate the only one that is left. Father, thank you. The devil did not kill the last one. Thank you. That's how the death ended. <laughs> Misery. You may think you have emotional satisfaction. It looks sweet when you are sad because you have a reason to be sad. It's a lie. It's a deception. It's cancer. That it's your future. Don't explain why you must be sad. Don't explain it. It's not necessary. 
Then God now said, you know how to escape to this sorrow? Take your mind from it and look to the future. He said, that's how Jesus did it. Behave like Jesus, who for the joy that was set ahead of him, he endured the contradiction. Just cast your mind. 20 years from now, do you think it will be like this? Uh -huh. Just cast your mind to future. When you are troubled by your today, cast your mind to your future. That's why God show you vision and show you dream of your vision. So you have something to think about. You, you, you think about the dream, the good vision, the good dream. Meditate on it. That's how you defeat the sorrow of today. He said this in the book of, is it Hebrews 12? Hebrews 12, chapter, Hebrews 12, 2 and 3. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Uh -huh. Who for the joy that was set before him. Before the joy that was set before him. Endured the cross. That's how he endured the cross. Despising the shame. He despised the shame that he was passing through now. He, he, and that's why he was able to despise the shame. It doesn't matter how ridiculous your situation may be, how shameful your today may be. There's a key. Look to your future. That's why God gives you vision to see something you should look at. Say, but I don't, I don't have any future. Oh, no, that you are alive. It's an indication there's a good future. For to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. That your tomorrow is better than your today is the reason why God woke you up. If it will not be better, it will not wake you up. Oh. So once you, once you wake up, it's already an explanation that there's something better than today that is ahead of you whether you see vision or not. The indication that your tomorrow is better is your waking up today. So just be celebrating. Since the, the God could not kill me, because God is a God. He said better is the end of 18 than the beginning. He wants to make your ending better than your beginning. That's why he kept you alive. Because if you die in this frustration, it means your ending is worse than your beginning. And it's not his principle. If you are a child of God, you have a covenant to end more gloriously than the way you started. So he's deliberately keeping you alive to bring scripture to fulfillment for scripture cannot be broken. Oh, somebody celebrate God here. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why you have not died, your enemies are still planning. He didn't allow them to kill you. Yeah, witches are still in your house. They have not died in your family. They are there. They had meeting last night. But God did not allow them because there's a future he wants to fulfill. Oh. They said they wanted to lay hold on Jesus. He said that they could not. I said, why? He came to die now. He said, no, because... It was not yet his time. There is something he must do, which he has not done. So even with all their attempt to kill him, he vanished out of their sight. You know why you, your enemy cannot kill you? There is some, God is about to do something. He has not done it. He, and he must do it. Otherwise, he will become a liar. He wrote your future in your destiny before you were born. He is not thinking of what you will be. No. He said, while you were yet in your mother's womb, I framed and concluded your destination. So you can't die in your transition when I have already described your destination. Oh, my, 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 my. You can't die in your transition when I have already defined your destination. You cannot die in your transition when I have already defined your destination. You cannot die in transition when I have already defined your destination. I'm keeping you alive to be true. I'm keeping you alive to be true so that your conclusion will be better than your beginning. Oh, somebody shout three hot amen. One. Amen. Two. Amen. Three. Amen. Whatever it will take God 
are to make you end gloriously, they will be gravitating towards you. Amen. Amen. Whatever it will take God to make you end better than the way you are now, they will begin to happen to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So you should know why you are still alive. No matter the height you have gone, God still said there's a better tomorrow. That's why it's not that you are too prayerful. It's not your prayer that stopped the witches. Oh, somebody thought his prayer is the one that stopped the witches. Ah, I prayed like you and the witches still pressed me down. It's not your prayer that stopped the witches. It's not your fasting that stopped the witches. Ah. It is because God has something to do with your tomorrow. And he doesn't want to be a liar. He has announced it already. You will must fulfill it. That's what kept you alive. Forget about that. <laughs> Forget about what? Death. I don't pray not to die. No. Because death is not relevant. The issue is, have I finished all that God said he will do in my life? That's the issue. What keeps you alive is your relevance to the agenda of God. Mm. Uh. What keeps you alive is your relevance. The more relevant you are, the more you keep staying alive. The more relevant you are, the more you keep staying alive. This introduction, we are talking about glory. That here you must encounter glory. Glory that drives away the shame of poverty. When you can't pay house rent, you are still trekking, minister, sweating, inside suit, petting, keke na pep. It's an embarrassment to your calling. Then your landlord increase the house rent. Say, Holy Ghost, fire. Don't kill the man. It's the man's house. Go and build your own. <laughs> it's giving you a signal that you are bigger than where you are. <laughs> go, and go and look for, you. Go and look for your, your, your house. Can I hear the Lord? Amen. Amen. How many of you believe that this conference is going to change you? Amen. Hallelujah. Shout a very big amen. 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 This is introduction. Now, the second thing we have to emphasize on is that the glory you will encounter will chase away powerlessness. The Bible said in the book of Mark, it said, and Jesus returned from the mountain of transfiguration and he met the disciples struggling with an issue. And the woman who brought the child immediately announced to embarrass the disciples. I brought my child though. But your disciple could not. That thing wounded my heart. Your disciples could not. But you know that they, they did something before. Eh? Before that they, they have healed the sick before. This is not their first ministration. That's what I'm talking about. You have had some little testimonies of supernaturality. But I'm talking about a higher dimension. Things you couldn't do before this conference. When you live here, Jesus. you will be able to do it. Amen. Amen. You are going to stand up and decree that I will encounter, I didn't say beg God. Oh. No, there's a difference between begging and decreeing. Yes, sir. I decree that the glory I will encounter in this conference will drive away the shame of powerlessness. The shame of powerlessness. Jesus. The shame of powerlessness. Inability to demonstrate supernatural power. Ah. Inability to show signs and wonder. Inability to heal, to set free, to do miracles. Open your mouth. In the, in the name, the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and do it. Father Lord, I pray. Oh God. 
the glory, the glory I Lord, I will encounter in this conference, oh God, in this conference, Lord. We destroy the yoke, oh God. We wipe away, oh God, every inability, oh God, every inability of power. Oh God, 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 oh
the same God. I was the only one that changed. Yes, sir. You are going to put a demand on God. What I could not do before, by the potency of your presence in this conference, I'm going out there to do it again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, put your mouth and pray. My Father, by the, Lord, oh by the potency of this conference, the oh God, of this conference what I could Lord. not do before, Baba. What I could oh not. Oh my God. Father, Lord. Let that grace, oh God, to do. What Let I it enter me before, in this conference, oh God. Oh God. Let it rest Let upon me. Let your grace take over. Let what I could not before. My God, let it rest upon me. Your grace, this conference, Lord. Your grace, Lord. Your grace, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Is Isaac Mamadou here? Isaac Mamadou. He's on his way. I hope he will come before my teaching. I'm, I'm sure my teaching will change him. Now, the third thing you need to pray about is karata. Someone say karata. Karata. Uh, you demonstrate glory by karata. The kind of karata, the kind of discipline you demonstrate, it reveals the glory of God. Now, this conference will adjust some things. We change some things about your karata and about your your discipline. Not just uh, immorality, whatever. I'm talking about your discipline. Now, for example, I love, um, I love bole. You know me, not bole. I love it. As I was driving along the road, I saw beautifully packaged bole. I was almost stopping. I remember who I am. So I said, driver, move, 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 move. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So uh -huh. we, went, we went to the front. I said, Paki, you want But pretend, he pretended that he was looking for something. He came out, then he went back to Bole and bought it and was moving around. And came now, now, why am I doing that? Because my status do not permit me. I will be disgracing the one who sent me. There are some things you do that is an embarrassment to the one that sent you. Yes, sir. The way you talk, the way you watch social media, the way you watch television, like common, ordinary men, your characteristics is showing that you are ordinary. There is no polishing. A whole set man, they throw granite for, 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 for truth, for, for, they throw granite for, 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 for public. Huh? Apostle Paul said, it may be lawful, but not expedient. There are many things that is not a sin, a sin, but by your status, you must not mingle with such things. I pray that this conference will adjust your dispositions. Amen! If after a conference, you are still the same thing you are. Jesus. It's an indication you passed through the conference, but the conference did not pass through you. Oh. Mm. It means you didn't come. Your wife must see some changes. Your children must notice some adjustment.
people around you must notice some adjustment. If they cannot notice some very obvious adjustment, upgrading in your composure, it may just be the way you dress. You were too casual as to be called a man of God. There are many dressing we dress. It's not comfortable. You think I'm happy that I'm wearing tie? I'm sweating now like a Christmas goat. Now, it's not convenient that I have to package myself to reflect the king that enthroned me. You don't dress because of you. You dress because of the one who sent you. Yes, sir. So you see, there are some things you need to adjust. You are too casual to be respected. I want to say it again. You are too casual to be respected. At least I will say it again. Many of you, you are too casual to be respected. You are too casual to be respected. I said, go for the last time. You are too casual to be respected. Dressing well is not pride. It only shows you are responsible. Dress well. Once you are stepping out of your house, step out like a king. Don't step out as an ordinary man. So, you are going to make a demand that, Lord, this conference must force adjustments. Adjustments in my disposition, in the way I relate with people, in the way I relate with people, in the way I talk. If your jokes and your jestings are too ordinary, you better control it. Do you know why the other normally use handkerchief to close their mouth? Huh? Because it's an abomination for ordinary queer people to see the teeth of royalty. My teeth is too golden for you to see and be counting how many. That is only a figurative expression that royalty don't talk anyhow with your mouth wide open. You laugh. <laughs> no, keep, keep your, you are too royal to, la to laugh in that dimension. There are things, that's why Apostle Paul said, I have become a prisoner of Jesus. Now, a prisoner, it means your limitation and freedom is taken away. You're not free to make your choice. Everything you do is in alignment of the one that enthroned you for the pleasure of the king. Because of him. Because of him. Say, Pastor, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like to wear a suit. I, in a t-shirt, I go just free. You are not free, you are bound. Once you are a, once you are a saint man, you are under bondage. You dress like a bond man, a bond Bond slave, a bond servant, to please him, not to please your comfort. Packaging yourself as a minister is not pride. You are trying to represent the kingdom you came from. An ambassador of a kingdom where the owner says the silver is mine and the gold is mine. So I say, change. This is the last prayer you are praying for this introduction. Lord, this conference must change me. In every area, there need to be adjustment. There need to be change. There need to be adjustment in the way I relate with people, in the way I comport myself, in how long I watch television, how long I, I my going out, my coming in. People must observe a change, a seeable change, observable change. Open your mouth, talk to God, prayer. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. This conference, oh God, Father, must change me, Lord. This conference must change must me, Lord. Must change me, oh God. A seeable the, change. The, the observable change, oh God. People, oh God. This conference, oh God, do things, oh God. We change my life. But let this conference, oh God, we change my life. Change it all. We change in my the life. name of Jesus, we oh God. my life. Let this conference, oh God, oh God. change, oh God. This conference, oh God, we change my life. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we change us, Lord. 
I talk, oh we God, change us now. the way I relate with we people, change us now. the way I do things, we oh God, change us now. the way, oh God, I behave, oh God, Father. let this conference, oh God, Father. change me, Lord, Father. let this conference, oh God, Father. change me, Lord, Father. let this conference, oh God, Father. change my character, we let pray. this conference, oh God, we change pray. my ways, oh God, we pray. let this conference, oh God, we pray. change the way I relate with people, we pray. Oh, oh God, God. This my God, Father. use this conference, Lord, let it so change me, Father, Lord. Oh God, use this conference, oh God. Use to this is to change me all in the name of Jesus. Rakoteka teka teka. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I went to Lagos to visit a young man who was floating a drama outfit. A man of God, an evangelist. He was doing it. He was doing a 21 days dry fast. And as I went to visit him, and uh, I don't know how our discussion went. Along the line, okay, I remember now. That sister is also a member of the drama team. She was very close to the, to the brother. And just holding, and then just holding each other. I, I got upset. I don't like all those uh, romantic display in the name of grace. That is not, that grace is, is not grace. But grace that allows promiscuity and lasciviousness is not grace. Any kingdom where there is no restriction is fake. Because the restriction is a test for your loyalty to the kingdom. Any kingdom where there is no restriction is fake. It's a deception. Because it is the restriction that proves your loyalty to the kingdom. You are hearing preachers in the name of grace, grace, say you are free to do anything. They are deceiving you. It's a deception. Say we are under grace. We are not under any law. Restriction is not a covenant of law. No, it began from the beginning. Eat every tree, but don't eat that one. It's a restriction. In the, in, the, in the workings of God, there must be a restriction placed to test your faithfulness to the relationship. It's not legalistic. It's to test your faithfulness to the relationship. I want, I'll, I'll be hoping that somebody here we have a testimony that I was head hostage by a character that I have been struggling with for many years. But by the fact of the conference, the yoke was broken. There's no perfect person here to, today. The remaining area where you need deliverance, you are going to make a strong demand. And you are going to do it while sitting down. Pray like a soldier who said this thing must come to an end before it would become a public embarrassment. So I told the staff, shift. What are you doing? Don't do that nonsense. We are before God. Even though we are practicing, we are before God. So that's why you do not, not, not you go and you, you go, you go and you go and lure him to to to, to sex. Ah, uh, he said he has done it. Too. Uh, what, done what? Uh, he, he said he said he's fasting, twenty one days dry. On the seventh day of his fast, he slept with me. And he just she just opened up. Now that, that is you have a meeting with God, and yet your sin was not this dead weight. Any sin that you don't deal with in your encounter with God will deal with you. Remember, Dave, Moses had a, a sin of anger. Am I right? He spent 40 days with God asking for power, power to lead them to Israel. He didn't ask for power to lead himself to the promised land. Forty days. Under 40 days, yet he did not report himself. The anger I'm having 
that made me to destroy the, the Ten Commandments. The anger that made me to kill an Egyptian. The anger, ah, this anger must die. No, he didn't pray about that. He's praying to do ministerial success. I want to have ministerial success. When ministry began with you, I will be expecting somebody here to send me a testimony of an area of weakness. Weakness that was destroyed by this conference. So you're going to sit down and do a serious prayer. When I say in the name of Jesus, you will say it very well in the name of... Let me tell, look, look at it. We cover up too much. Can you imagine... Barnabas and Saul. Two people selected not by man but by the Holy Spirit. You remember the story in Acts 13. The Holy Ghost spoke. Pick Barnabas and Saul for the special work. Out of all of them, they were specially selected. Even with the, that act. A little quarry. A little quarry. <laughs> To call it. They don't understand the misery of the kingdom. That when God established a partnership, there is a senior partner and a junior. And God takes side with the senior. Hey. To God, the senior is always right. With you, not with God. You may be wrong with God. But in the issue of two of you, the senior is always right. And God support the senior to judge you. Even though the senior will face judgment in heaven. Barnabas, because they ordained them the same day, he refused to understand that Paul is the senior partner in this calling. An argument came. And when the argument came, He couldn't submit his own opinion for Paul's own to win. They are arguing over Mark, who will join us, who will join. Although the argument of Barnabas was right, that this guy, he didn't follow us when ministry was tough. Now, now we are already sharing testimony. He is now, he now he wants to join us. No. Anyone that does not labor will not eat. He quoted scripture, I suppose, to justify his stand. But that God does not use those legalistic explanations. To judge between two partners. The senior is always right. People that were mature to be sent on missionary trip, a little quarry, they separated apart. They could not even resolve quarry. Now, and you say you are mature, you speak in tongue, a little quarry, you disengage from somebody that have your future in his life. Without him, you cannot be complete. Just like a son or a daughter having issue with his father in the Lord. Somebody you have already accredited as your father in law. You don't have issue with him. Humility should dawn on you to swallow the bitter tablet your father gave you. God knows how to water the bitterness with Fanta and Coke. Just, yeah, God will, God will pacify you. Humility. Don't ever cross road with somebody that you have called your mentor. No. It's pride to confront him. And pride goeth before destruction. Bible says, who are you to judge another man's servant? Before his master, he stands justified or condemned. It's not you. All those who speak against pastors, they have no heaven to go. They may have reason why they are speaking against pastors. But that is not in their jurisdiction. It's not in their assignment. You know the story of Asa 
Is he Asa now? In the Bible? Who was so much honored by God, he was blessed and helped. There was a sacrifice time. Uzziah. Thank you, my daughter. And it was so unlike Second Chronicles 26. To be honest, he just felt that the priest is wasting time. In view of the way God has been honoring me, he just decided to do what is the priest assignment to do. And God said, what? Because I have been supporting you, because I have been accrediting you, does it make you superior to the priest? And God poured leprosy upon him. A man that was so helped by God ended in leprosy. Please, I beg you, you have to understand in our kingdom, the way things run. People put Oyedekpo for mouth. They cost Oyedekpo. A man who have paid his dues. A man who labored from beginning. Who is not enjoying and you are jealous. When you see any person speaking against a man of God, you see jealousy. It's just the bottom line is that they are jealous. Jealous of the success story. Because if it's correction, you should know how to meet him privately or send a private SMS to him. So that you are making a public talk about a man of God you don't know where he came from. You are jealous of his success. Don't join people to condemn any pastor. Because they know how they will just settle the issue with their God. You hear what I'm saying now? Don't be involved. Otherwise, you may not make heaven. And the pastor you are condemning will, will get there. Face your business. Is his success disturbing you? Uh -huh. Face your business. Those who are gossiping men of God, they are jealous of their success. Many years ago, I was like that. I was condemning big churches when my church was small. I said, not, not be many church big, how many they go, how many they go heaven? They get big church, how many they go heaven? And then I had an encounter with God, and God said, what you condemn, you are not qualified to receive. Forget about big church until you stop condemning pastors with big church. That's what, that's what stopped me. When I stopped condemning pastors with big churches, I, I had a big church. What you condemn, you can't receive. What you condemn, you can't receive. Keep your mouth shut. You hear what I'm saying now? We come here to change. If this conference cannot change you, you did not attend this conference. There must be some areas where God is changing some few things and adjusting some few things. Can I hear a loud amen? Amen. So while you are seated, I'm going to take authority. Every character deficiency in me, every area I need adjustment, every area I need some changes, any area in the thoughts, in the words, and my actions that is not perfect, that must change. No, let your glory in this conference bring a change to that area. And I want to see the volume of your prayer. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. My Lord, God, in the name of Jesus, I ask your God, we ask, Lord, let your glory any your area, Lord. We are our life, oh God, have deficiency, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, let your word, Lord, change us, Lord, change us, Lord, change us, Lord, change us, Lord, change Father Lord, let your word, let your word, oh God, change us, Lord. Let your word, Father, change our life. Let your word change us, Lord. Change that area, Lord. Change that area, Lord. Change that area, Change that area, Lord. 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 
Father Lord, let your word change us now. Let your word change us now. Prateka yanda, atalabale, ekote prata, inana namalata, eparata. Oh God, let your word change us. Jesus, Amen. Now we are holding a break here for intercession. I want to look for a partner. We are going to pray this prayer, these three prayers together. The glory that will be revealed in this conference must chase away the shame of poverty, Amen. the shame of powerlessness, Amen. and the shame of character deficiency. Amen. Now, we're going to take it one by one. You have three minutes for one prayer point, three minutes for the other, three minutes for the other. We are going to use, we are going to space out. I will ring the bell after 15 minutes. Uh, is there any general overseer here? If you are in that K there, you are in that K there of general overseer, please stand up. You are in that K there of a founder. You are in that category of a founder, please. All right, remain standing. You will move from your seat and look for a partner. We are going to pray this prayer for each other. I will go to the lower one, but you first of all discover yourself and then you go to the, to the back. You go to do this prayer very well. I'll give you some few minutes. Just move around, look for any person and uh, just choose any person. Please look for somebody. Look for somebody. Only those who are in that level of general overseer. Look for somebody. If you are not a general overseer, all the remaining of us will stand up. You have a special ministry, an evangelist, an apostle, a bishop, a teacher. If you belong, yes. Yes, you represent. Now, if you are already in this ordained class, remain standing. If you are not in this ordained class, you will sit down first. If you are not, in, you are not a pastor, you are not uh, a teacher, you are not an evangelist, you are not an apostle, you are not ordained in this category, you don't have any ordination, you are not a deacon, you, you sit down first. You are not a deacon, you are not a deaconess, you are not an evangelist, you sit down first. You are not a deacon, you are not a deaconess, you are not a pastor, a teacher, you are not having ordination. You are not ordained. You sit down first. Now please look for somebody as a partner. We are going to pray this, the glory that he will experience. The glory. The glory. Ask for his name. Ask for the name. Don't face each other directly. Be sideways. Ask for the name. The remaining of you, don't pray yet. I'm going to take the first one. I'm going to, I'm going to conduct it. Bible said, pray you one for another. All right, the remaining of you that are seated, look for somebody to partner with. You get up and look for somebody to partner with. Somebody say glory. 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 Somebody say glory. Glory. Somebody say glory. Glory. Somebody say glory. Glory. You are going to pray for this, your partner. I hope you know the mystery of intercession. The Bible said, Job needed glory. He didn't have it by praying for himself. The Bible said, when he prayed for his friend, the glory came. This prayer you are about to do will attract to you the needed glory. Amen.
as you pray for that person, try to pray more than the person is praying for you. Do it from your heart. Please, don't face each other directly. Just hold each other by the side so you don't spit, spit on each other. For those who are watching online, look for somebody where you are and hold somebody and begin to pray with the person. Now, the first prayer we are praying, the glory that will drive away the shame of poverty. Pray for him that this prayer will push him up financially. That when he gets there, he will remember you. He will know you were the one that prayed him up. Did you take, did you, did you take your names? Please, you will take the name of this, your partner. It's your prayer partner throughout this conference. It's your prayer partner throughout this conference. And after the conference, you can begin to pray. If it's a, a male to a female, don't pray together at the same place. Pray through telephone. All right. Wisdom is profitable. The glory that will drive away the shame of poverty. Ah. After this prayer, you take the name of your partner, take the phone number. You are my prayer partner in National Strategy Prayer Conference 2022. You were my prayer partner. Before we see another conference, you will share me the testimony that you had. Amen! Amen. All prayers are done through telephone. This intercession, what is the venue for the intercession? Telephone. telephone. Don't call each other and say, eh, see me, let's do this prayer in that hotel. Don't go The location of this prayer is where? Oh. Telephone. That's the venue. You are holding the right man. The right man is going to help you. You know him? Yeah. Lord, I dedicate this partnership. Jesus. That this partnership that was inaugurated here, not planned. Ah. We didn't plan it. They just found themselves as partners. Let this partnership produce the glory that they have been waiting for. Amen. Amen. Let this partnership produce the lifting that they have been waiting for. Amen. Amen. Let this partnership destroy the yoke that they have been itching to destroy. Amen. Amen. Let this partnership drive away the shame that has been there for a long time. Amen. Amen. Let this partnership attract the long expected glory. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ah. Tell your partner, you will see the evidence of this prayer. See the evidence of this prayer. Now, number one, Father, in this conference, let him experience the glory that will drive away the shame of poverty. In the name of Jesus. In the, na in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray for that person. Let me hear the noise of your prayer. Bora. Lantata. La guashata, la vritate, le kentete, le gabarara, lindropara, varantus capera, le guayentate, le guarando chefra, na kwakwa, varus eperenta, la guayamama, la guayamama, 
Yagoya Mama, the Ron Tariba, Ligna Gepare, in La Compara, Maranto Perenta, La Gayanta, Father, the glory we share in this conference, let it drive away the shame of poverty from the life of everyone. The shame of poverty from the life of everyone. The shame of poverty from the life of everyone. The shame of poverty from the life of everyone. The shame of poverty from the life of everyone. The shame of poverty from the life of everyone. The shame of poverty from the life of everyone. Ke la kwata, gira rein tete, gila glen dede, ve rein tata, varando shipra. Ne compra le para zararanta y la glete morenta va vayando le ve maranta cla babosha veré de boshata fada na hore te rua para ligna catara yingla de 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 libra le babo bosha y frele de 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 pura varanda. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are going to pray. Every inherited poverty. Ah. The yoke of inherited poverty. Jesus. Must break. Amen. Inherited from your father. Because your father was poor. Ah. Your mother was poor. Because you are born in a poor Jesus. family. So you inherited poverty. Ah. That poverty must pray. Amen. Open your mouth and pray for that partner. Ratata, 
Il lag les gauches. Vrin tate. Le gobonta. La vran doche. Il la goubou sate. Le goubararanta. Le gnebobonta. La vranto. Vina genta. Le Boboche, l'Imprataya, la Guayanta, le Rouchata, l'Ignegue, Reverenta, l'Incapos, Zibamandos, Riglegede, le Rédete, la Guachata, le Rontata. Jesus. We bring a contact that will prosper you. Amen. We connect you to someone that will prosper you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray for your partner. Lord, I pray for everyone that is here. Lord, at this conference, we connect them to contacts. Contacts that will prosper them. Contacts that will prosper them. Contacts that will prosper them. Amen. Amen. You are going to pray that this conference will connect you with a contact that will move you Amen. to your next definition of success. Ah. Amen. Now, listen carefully. Life is about contact. Now, of course, you know, but with all sense of humility, you know, I don't have pride in my blood. By the grace of God, I've been preaching for 48 years. By now, you should know me. I don't have nothing. I don't. I don't. It's not my my nature. My mother, my father, we came from a very humble lineage. And again, I became a child of Jesus Christ, who was also humble. Where will I get pride from? I was satisfied with my title. I don't. I don't believe in title. You know, you should. I've been holding my title as pastor for 48 years. I don't know that one. But I, I had a contact with my son to preach for him. And somebody who had been watching me online and had been admiring me and he has been desiring to see me. But this man has a bigger platform 
than I have. It has a global platform, but I have a denominational platform. But he respects me, but his platform is bigger than my own. So he came just to see me. And he, 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 he greets me, respects me. Papa, Papa. He respects me as a father. He calls me father in the Lord. But he has a bigger platform. Humility is very important in this our work. He told me when we were telephone conversation that the Lord whispered to him because the platform he has, they consecrate bishops. He said the Lord whispered to him to consecrate me bishop. He said it doesn't matter to them because he is junior to me. He, he respects me a lot. He asked me to pray for him. So he believes in my ministry. If I'm a proud type, I won't accept it from him. But I remember Jesus accepted the baptism of John the Baptist for him to gain recognition. If you are not humble in this work, you will lose many open doors. So, I said, okay, no problem. And I was preparing for the day. Publicly, he took microphone. He said, this consecration is like that of John the Baptist baptizing Jesus Christ. That the latchet of his shoe, I'm not worthy to unloose. He used microphone to announce it publicly. That this man, I'm consecrating bishop, is bigger than me. So, after we did it, he now told me the meaning of the consecration. That he waited for 28 days. Why? He said because he chronicled my consecration as a bishop into the Gazette of United Kingdom. The same Gazette where the King of England was gazetted. If you go to Gogo now and Gogo my name as bishop, you will see it in United Kingdom Gazette. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm superior to him. I'm more anointed. There are some things God used a small boy to take you to. It was a small boy that took the hand of Samson to the pillar that he used to destroy the Philistines. If you are not sensitive, you will miss your opportunity. Now, he didn't stop there. So, the, the United Kingdom said they will not allow the consecration except after 28 days if there is no opposition. So, they waited for 28 days, no opposition. They now chronicled my name in the Gazette of United Kingdom. Hallelujah. As, as we are, so, it's, it's not, not that the bishop you see around, they have no credential. They don't bear the name bishop. They are not recognized anywhere. Now, by next year, I'll be going to the parliament to pray for the parliamentarians. Hallelujah. Now, hold on. Oh. Hold on. Because I humbled myself under a junior minister. Pride will kill some people. If I walk away from here now and say, okay, let the principal of the school of prayer finish the remaining preaching. Many of you will walk out. I say many of you will walk out. Because it's not daddy. Now, I was appointed to go to United States representing the platform that this man is fronting. I was chosen among all the bishops to go and preach in United States of America, Arizona, to, to preach on behalf of the platform. Now, those are opening now. From there, I'm going to Zambia 
to preach on behalf of the, of, of the platform. If you are not very careful, you will miss your opportunity of rising. Now, this came because of only one conference that I went to do for my own son in Manchester. This conference is about to connect you. Amen! Amen. You are going to pray. You are going to pray, pray for your partner that this conference is attending now. We connect him to somebody that will make him leave his level of poverty to a higher level of glory. Amen. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. supernatural dimension. Come, come. Where's Pastor Asa? I want to just appetize you with his testimony. There are many other testimonies like that. So I just to encourage you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sit down for a minute. Just Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me celebrate grace in the house. Let me celebrate grace. We have grace in the house. Celebrate grace in the house. Amen. Last year, I was here in the fire conference. The first day, the papa was preaching. When he was telling us about the journey of Jesus Christ going to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And when he returned, he returned with fire. And he was stressing on it. You will not return home the same way you came. You will return home with fire. I was sitting down there. I was just looking. After everything that day, the next day, he did the partition. When he laid hands on me, I discovered I fell. But I was struggling to stand up. My head was very heavy. And something told me, son, something has entered you. Inside church, I was just, I traveled in the realm of the spirit. I began to check some of my daughter and son in the church that have been having challenges. I said, Father, this fasting and prayer, no, this conference. No. Did you see what he did? After the conference, he began to look for his sons and daughters that had challenges. You must be bold enough after this conference. See, the anointing works with boldness. Where is Pastor Sylvester Omega? The anointing works with boldness. No matter how many hands I lay on you, if you don't exercise boldness, it won't work. The anointing and the impartation works with what? Talk to me. You see this, my son? Have your wife delivered now? Yes, sir. By operation? No, sir. Normally. Normal delivery. Now. Hallelujah. Look at what happened. 
The doctor phone called him. I don't know. Was it the doctor I called you or your wife? My wife called me. Said that doctor said they want to do CS. And I've already blessed the oil for them. I told you, God visited me. Not dream, not vision. A physical visitation. And he told me, the oil is your motto. If you use it, it will produce results. And if you bless it for people, they will get results. Before I left for UK, I blessed the oil for all of them. I said, don't look for me, look for the oil. And many of them have been sharing testimonies. It's only just one. So the wife called, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On the, sec on the, on the first of November, my wife had a labor, a labor pain. So she decided to pack her things and go to the hospital. Really, she got there. The doctor checked on her and said, yes, we are keeping you here. You are on labor. Then she was there. Then at about three, four hours, the doctor checked again and the doctor said, the baby is not moving. The labor is not fast. The labor is just about three centimeters. But it will get to 10, 10 centimeters before she will deliver. I said, okay, no problem. I left her in the hospital. I came back again in the evening. Only for me to get there, it was still three centimeters. Three centimeters? Three centimeters, yes, in the evening. Where is uh, Professor Malaka? Professor Malaka, uh -huh, please come. We need your attention. It's not an academic professor like that. It's a medical professor. Medica. Help me celebrate him. <laughs> How many is a centimeter? Is it like three? They, are we aware? Do we expect? The, the, depending on the size of the baby. Depending on the size of the baby. Yeah, between eight and ten. Between eight and ten. Yes. Is that what the doctor said? Uh, exactly. The doctor said if it is ten centimeters, she can only deliver when she is, when she is ten centimeters. Ten centimeters. Yes, sir. Okay. So, Celebrate the professor, please. No. So I went home that evening. I went home that evening at about at about twelve o'clock. I prayed till three o'clock in the morning. I prayed about it till three o'clock. So the next morning when I got to the hospital. I went straight to, the, to, to my wife. I said, what is happening? My wife just called me and said, honey, pray for me. I said, pray. I've been praying since I'll last night. Since last night. I've been praying since last night. What kind of prayer I'll do you want me to again. pray? He said, the doctor said, it's still three centimeters. I said, all the prayers that I did. All, all the prayer I did. It's still three centimeters. I said, yes. I said, okay. Immediately, I remember the oil. I just opened my bag. And I brought out the bottle of oil. Brought out the oil. And when I brought out the bottle of oil, I remember the kind of prayer pastor Innocent Okerele prayed. He said every kingdom that wants to take charge in that environment, that the kingdom of God is enthroned and is established in the, in the hospital. So immediately I brought out the oil, I began to pray. For 15 minutes I prayed and I anointed the hospital, I anointed her, her and I gave her to drink. So when she finished drinking, she looked at me and said, then what was the next? I said, sit down. I said, when you deliver, you call me. When you deliver, call then me. Because the doctor was looking at me <laughs> as if maybe we want to negotiate or Maybe you want to negotiate or sign, <laughs> sign the sign a, sign a document for a serial session of operation. So I left. I said, "Honey, when you deliver, call me." I went out of the hospital. You went out of the hospital. You don't wait to check. Yes, sir. You, you out of there. When you deliver, call me. I'm not signing any paper. Yes, sir. So when I got to the office, I was seated. After some time, I just checked my phone. I saw a missed call. When I when I check, when I called, I said, "Honey, the baby is out." So I ran down to the hospital. When I got there, behold, my wife does not even look like somebody who gave birth. She was carrying the baby. The doctor said, "You that we can go home that very moment." Hallelujah! Now we operate anointing by boldness. Yes, sir. I pray that this conference. We program the needed boldness into your spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout boldness. 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 Now, go ahead. So, as I was going, going home, at this uh, ring road market here, I bought apple. I bought three types. That red one and that small one. And I said, anyone that eats this red one will give birth to a child. Why the one that eat this uh, other small one, one 
we be, gave birth to a woman. There was a lady in my, in my church for seven years, no uh, child. I called her, I said, go to the church and wait for me, I'm coming. Go and wait for me. Go and wait for me, today. <laughs> After this conference, yes, sir. the boldness of divinity will enter you. Amen. You see, it began to look for people that have problems. You can't finish a conference like this and you go and hide inside the room. No! Look for where to demonstrate the power. Ah. Go ahead. Then, before I got to the church, they were already at the altar. I used the oil that they blessed for, for us. Rub the ample. I gave her to it. I said, you want to bomb boy? I said, yes. I gave her to it. After it, I told her, after this month, if you did not take in, I'm not your pastor. Huh? Wait, wait, wait. Say it again. After this, after month, this... Uh, if you did not take in, I'm not, I'm your, not pastor. your pastor. Listen, this is a statement of confidence. Godness. A statement of what? Of confidence. Wow. So the glory of God, the woman is holding her bassy baby boy now. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Now, listen to me. You see, previous conferences, you see me sharing my testimonies. Am I right? I have stopped. Because I'm already known. I don't need to share that testimony. What I'm waiting for now is your testimony. Hallelujah. By next year's conference, Jesus. you will come out here and share your testimony. Amen. Amen. The testimony of financial breakthrough. Amen. The Amen. testimony of supernatural breakthrough. Amen. Amen. The testimony of character breakthrough. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you are expecting it, shout the Lord. Amen. 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 It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's not all. Though. There are people. All, there was a, one of his members outside the country who didn't have document. He said, wait. Not be, not be last year on. You are having your document. Minister to that guy. Have he, uh, has he received his document now? I told her, after three times, they denied him. I told her, don't go for another commission again. Don't go again. The embassy will call we'll you call by yourself. Ah! The boy stayed for like six months. Six months. By, uh, I think October. October, the boy said he was just playing at home. He saw a call from this former lawyer. Come to the office, your paper is ready. <laughs> he didn't go back to Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. This conference will produce your anointing. Amen. Amen. This conference will produce your anointing. Amen. Amen. This conference will produce your anointing. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now there must be evidence you came. There yeah, you saw evidence you came. Ah. Now my number, you have it. Mm. That the evidence that you came to this conference Jesus. is that you have a supernatural testimony. Amen. A financial testimony. Amen. Amen. A character testimony. Amen. Can I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. Can I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. Can I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. The last prayer. Any sin in the life of your partner must break. If your partner will pray for you also. You will pray for your partner. Please, you, you think that we are not perfect. Me, I have some issues that I want God to deal with. It may not be the terrible one. It may just be talking too much. It may just be waking up too, too late. It may just be watching so, so, social media too much. Every time, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. It may not be morality. There's an area you need God to, uh, to change your character. Please pray for this person. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Karabaraya, Vila Kata, Malentete, Marantata, Maranta.
Jesus Christ. Pastor Mrs. Malakai. Pastor Mrs. Malakai. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You, you help me pick up this reference. James, you'll be handling the opening prayer tomorrow. 15 minutes. Tomorrow must be glorious. For in the morning. 8.30 to 8.45. But please read the scripture for me. Okay? James 5. James 5. Don't leave your partner. This conference must bring about a change. Amen! I said this conference must bring about a lifting. Amen! I said this conference must bring about a promotion. Amen! This conference must bring about a promotion. Amen! This conference must change your level. Amen! This conference must change your level. Amen. This conference must change your level. Amen. Amen. This conference must change your level. Amen. Verse 17. This is where we are going to pray for one another now. That this conference will impact upon you, upon your partner, an anointing for effective prayer. Prayer that can lock what needs to be locked. Prayer that can open what needs to be opened. Read for me. Elias was a man subject to like passions as if we are. Elijah is like, like you are. I like that first phrase. It's just like you are. He was not born by a special woman. He was not born by a special mother. There was nothing special about his birth. In fact, the Bible refused to mention his birth. It was insignificant. An ordinary man like that, by his birth, born ordinarily. Go ahead. And he prayed earnestly. He that, prayed earnestly. That it may not rain. That it may not rain. And it rained not. It didn't rain. On the earth, by the space of three years and six months. Three and a half years, no rain. One man. Born ordinarily like you. But just because he had the capacity of prayer. 
he was able to lock the heavens. This conference will impose upon you a capacity to lock the doors that needs to be locked. Amen. Uh -huh, go ahead. And he prayed again. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. The heaven opened and gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruits. Oh, I dedicate somebody here. This conference will impose upon you capacity to open doors. Amen. Amen. Now you are going to pray for your partner that this conference will do for him power to pray. Power to pray to the dimension of opening heavens and closing doors. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus. Minamamanta, la guashata, barandorsi pare, liprate, boronta papa, ligua guayanta. This conference will impart upon everyone the prayer capacity to close the doors that need to be closed, to open doors that need to be opened. Nehusa parandos, anana susua kabahate, ligne gete rebo sata, varus kamata te, ligne gete de paros, la guayan tata, ne rente te, Lord at this conference, we put upon everyone a spiritual capacity, a prayer capacity. To close the doors that needs to be closed. And to open the doors that needs to be opened. In the name of Jesus. What we bind here on earth to be bound in heaven. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The last prayer you are praying is the impartation we are going to have tomorrow night. You know, this conference is just for two days. Tomorrow we'll be here in the morning. Then we, we go and come back again in the night. By 9 p.m., we start the last meeting. That's where we are going to minister to those who have issues. You are sick, you will be healed. You have issue of bondage, you will be set free. Amen. Administration. So that you will not, you, you know you are, you are healing people and you are sick, you need to be healed. You are setting people free and you have some challenge, you need to be set free. It's in the night, we will do it. And the impartation will be done in the night. Would that be okay? So that we don't hurry. When you are hurrying, the anointing doesn't flow. You are hurrying. The anointing doesn't flow. There must be liberty of time. So we need to be here in the night. And then in the morning, everyone will go home. Except those who are doing graduation. The student of the school of prayer that are doing graduation will be graduated. And some people who need ordination, we're going to do ordination for them. On Saturday, by, I think by 2 o'clock, the, 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 the coordinator will let us know. Huh? 1 p.m. 1 p.m. We'll have the graduation and the ordination for those that need ordination. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to pray now for the impartation. This impartation must show in your life. Amen. Amen. Impartation means something that the man who is doing partition for you has that you need is released to you. That's the meaning of impartation. So whatever you can do in that di direction, you will be able to do it. Amen. Impartation means a capacity from the one who is imparting you 
breaking and solving a problem that you couldn't solve by yourself. And tomorrow night, it will be exactly like that. Amen. You will sit down while I read this testimony just to encourage you before we pray about this impartation. We documented it. He's going to read. Nice Pastor Ehis Okogo. Thank you, Daddy. Stolen destiny has been restored by the God of Pastor Samuel Osarai. My name is Umorin Etim Emmanuel from Cross River State. I declare that whatever is your portion that was stolen from you, whatever is supposed to be your own, God giving. Whatever is supposed to be your own that you labored for. That you lost somehow, somewhere. I declare by the impartation we are going to have tomorrow night, you will receive them back. Amen. I'm happy with that amen, and uh, it is going to be like that. I say it again in the name of the Lord Jesus. By the time my hand touches you tomorrow night, Every good thing that was yours, every good thing that you had before, every good thing that you fasted and fasted and God gave it to you, or somebody prayed for you, you received it, Jesus. and that you lost it, ah. you will get it back in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I declare whatever was stolen shall be recovered. Amen. Whatever was stolen from you shall be recovered. Amen. Amen. Every good opportunity, every advantage, every issue that was a blessing, anything you celebrated, every success level ah. that you lost, anything about your marriage that you lost, every good thing about your ministry that you lost, tomorrow, by the virtue of the impartation, you will recover the bar. Yeah. Amen. Go ahead. I graduated from the university in the year 2001. And after my National Youth Service Corp, I started applying for a job. I submitted my documents in different establishments. But no job was forthcoming. On April 21, the year 2003, I had a dream in which I saw a woman walk into my room, go straight to my file, and collected my NYC certificate and my university certificate. Now, there are some things... There are some encounters that God will not repeat. He put it there as a reference for you to keep on using it. He may not repeat that encounter again. Don't lose it. That's why we document some of them. Now, this revelation that this man had is not from this state. It came from another state. He has never known here before. He doesn't even know me. But in a dream, he saw a woman entered his sleep in a dream and went to where he kept his NYSE certificate and graduation certificate. And the woman took it. And I'm declaring upon somebody listening to me now and those watching me online. Whatever you lost via dream, Jesus. by the potency of this encounter in this conference, wow. you will get it back. Amen. Amen. 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 Go ahead. The woman told me that she was the one that will use my certificate to work, not me. In the dream, the woman told him, I'm the one that will use your certificate. After these dreams, things beca became even more difficult for me. After this dream, things became difficult. I'm dedicating somebody who had an encounter by revelation and your life went sour. Friends, that dream will be corrected. Amen. Amen. That dream will be corrected. Amen. That revelation will be corrected. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. So I decided to seek spiritual help. I went from, for deliverance in several churches. Yet, my situation remained the same. From the year 2001 to 2015, I lived from hand to mouth. I depended on my younger ones and my aged parents for my welfare. 
It was an embarrassment that was suggesting suicide to me. On the 19th of December, 2015, I had another dream, and this time I saw a man walk into my room and sat on my bed. I, be I began to beg the man to help me, but the man spoke the following words to me. I have not been mandated to help you. Pastor Samuel Osagai will help you. The man then gave me a piece of paper on which was written the address of Believers Ministries in Benin City and those states. Now, hold on. It was not a physical, it was a revelation, a dream. And the address of this church was given to him. He has never been here. I'm declaring by the potency of this conference, the address of your next location, your location of testimony. Jesus. Your location of success wow. shall be delivered to you. Amen. 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 I declare by the fact of this conference, you have an encounter where the address, the location of your success story, the location of your next achievement shall be delivered to you. Amen. Amen. It was a dream. Go ahead. I did not even have money for transport to Benin. Not even money for transport. So I went to borrow some money from a friend. You went to borrow from a friend. On the 8th of January 2016, uh -huh. I traveled down to Benin from Calabar using the address given to me to locate Believers Ministries. When I got to the church in Benin, I found out that there was an ongoing program tagged Early Satisfaction. There was one day left for the program to come to an end. One day left for the program to come to an end. I slept in the church that night. I slept in the church. And joined the program the next morning. Yes. During the service in the morning, Pastor Samuel Osaga gave a prophetic declaration that as his hand will be laid on the head of everyone present in the church, it will break every yoke of delay and attract speed and favor to everyone that has experienced delay. Now, this man remembered the purpose of the hand laying. Many don't know why the hand was laid. No, they don't know. If I ask you now, the hand I laid on some of you that were here last year, what was the purpose? You, you can't remember. That's why it doesn't work. You must know the reason why the hand was laid. And the purpose for this 2022 conference is glory. The glory that will drive away the shame of poverty. Amen. Amen. The glory that will drive away the shame of powerlessness. Amen. The glory that will drive away the shame of character deficiency. Amen. Amen. Now you need to write it down. You need to know why the hand was laid. There's a reason why the hand was laid. If you can't remember it, you can't manifest it. If you can't remember it, you can't manifest it. If you can't remember it, you can't manifest it. If you can't remember it, you can't manifest it. The first one, the hand was, this guy remembered why the hand was laid. The hand that will be laid on you in this 2022 conference is for what? For glory. Somebody shout it louder, it's for what? Glory. glory. The glory that will drive away the shame, the shame of, of poverty. poverty. The glory that will drive away the shame of powerlessness. The glory that will drive away the shame of character deficiency. See. I understood that this was my day of encounter uh -huh. with divinity. So I keyed into the word from Pastor Samuel Osara. I even used... I even used all the money on me, including my transport fare back to Calabar to sow a seed. As Pastor Samuel Osaga laid his hands on my head, I saw something leaving Pastor Samuel Osaga and it entered into me. That's what I want you to lay hold on. He's the only one that saw it. I didn't see it. Something left Osaga and entered him. I want to pray whatever goodness is in this man, 
as it will lay hand on me, let it enter me. Amen. Go ahead. After the close of the service, a man whom I now believe is an angel walked to me and gave me 4,000 naira. A man just walked to him and gave him 4,000 naira. Of course, he now knew that that man is not an ordinary man, was an angel. He said that was all he needed to get to Calabar. I declare after this hand is laid on you tomorrow, people will walk into your life to give to you. Yeah! I will say it seven times. It will happen like that. People will walk into your life to give you what you are looking for. Amen. I will say it six times. After the hand laying, people will walk to you and give you what you are looking for. Amen. I said again. After this hand laying, people will walk into your life and give you what you are looking for. Amen. <laughs> Somebody say, just like that. Uh, just like that. Uh, let, let me help you in case you are still doubting. Where's Pastor Ken? Was he able to make it? Okay, he's, he's a manager and uh, he's on the bottom. Now, let me help you with his testimony. It's going to work just like that. He introduced a man to me who had a business failure. He was into gas business and the business collapsed. And I asked him to see me and I anointed him and laid hand on him. He left. He went to the office where he went to beg for money. And as he sat down, somebody just walked to him and asked him what you are saying. Do you have the address or the account number of the man, of the company? He said, yes, he said, write it down. And the man wrote it down. And right where he sat down, the man transferred nine point something million. And the man walked away. He said, what pained him is that the, he, before he finished shouting, he didn't see the man again. The man just walked away. A man walked in, heard his complaint, and for, transferred 9.2 million on the spot and walked away. A man walked in because he heard his complaint and transferred 9.2 for somebody he never knew before. It's our member here. Just because the hand of a man sent by God was laid on him. I'm trying to help you by your prayer that this coming impartation must gain expression in your testimony. Amen. Amen. And after that, this was just what I needed to get back to Calabar. I returned to Calabar and that same night, I had another dream. Another dream. I saw Pastor Samuel Osaga walk into my room, accompanied by the man that gave me the address of Believers Ministries in my previous dream. Pastor Samuel Osaga was dressed in, this, in the same attire he wore in church. Pastor Samuel Osaga took my hand and led me to a beautiful office. To my amazement, that same woman, I saw in the dream on April 21, 2003, was sitting on a beautiful chair inside the office. Pastor Samuel Osaga told me that the chair the lady was sitting on belonged to me. He then walked towards the woman angrily and gave her a dirty slap on her face. It was a dream, oh. It was a dream. I don't slap people like that. It was a dream. It was a dream. The That's woman it. fell to the ground. The woman fell to the ground and amazingly, my NYC certificate and my university certificate came out from her private part. Pastor Osaga told the other man to pick up the documents and handed them over to me. He then asked me to sit on the beautiful chair. One week after this dream. One week after this dream. I got a call from Mobile Oil Company. Mobile Oil Company. Where I submitted my documents many years, years back, back, offering me a job. 
offering him a job. I, I was asked to resume immediately. Immediately. I declare this impartation you will get tomorrow. You will recover whatever you have lost before. Amen. Amen. Every celebration that you, have, you, you are supposed to have celebrated many years back that was denied you. Before you see the next conference, you will celebrate it. Amen. I'm sure you heard that prayer I prayed. There are some celebrations that ought to have happened by now. But you are still waiting. But before you see the next conference, you will see the celebration. Amen. I said two more times. There are some celebrations that you ought to have celebrated before now. But delay. But after the impartation tomorrow night, I said before you see the next year's conference, you will celebrate it. Amen. In the name of God the Father. Amen. In the name of God the Son. Amen. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somebody give a shout. Woo! Hallelujah. All right, it's okay. Those prophetic decrees have answered the prayers. Now, by 12 noon on the door, I'll start with the, the first lecture for today. And the first lecture is the jealousy of God. The jealousy of God. And within this few minutes, have a bottle of water to drink. Please drink. Even when you are fasting, you drink water. Drink, please. I found that those who don't drink, they start sleeping. When the preaching starts, they start sleeping. We say make you drink, you don't drink, now you sleep. Bless it, and then you drink. Don't eat anything that you did not bless. Bless the pattern of Jesus. Jesus never ate anything without blessing it. Bless it. Give thanks to God and bless it. Even if I'm the one, you came to my office and I gave you a drink. Don't say you're the shame. Make it, make it, make it no, no, no one bless them. Now you go eat poison. Bless them. Bless them. Anywhere you are, anyone that give you food and say, don't bless it. You know that he wants to poison you. Anything that goes into your mouth must be blessed. Anything that goes into your mouth must be blessed. All right. Now, we're about to know the difference between the boys and the men. Because when we cross 12 o'clock, the children will begin to close their eyes. Because they must have siesta. So when, when we see somebody closing his eyes in this second section, we know that he's a baby. This one is made for adults. Praise the Lord. Uh, have you had your water? Where is it? Oh, you finished it? Okay. <laughs> Amen. This water will take away diabetes. Amen. This water will take away sickness. Amen. This water is blessed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. It will correct your blood pressure. Amen. It will destroy every yoke of prostate cancer. Amen. It will wipe away every sign, every sign of sickness, of infection in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It will remove the pain you have been feeling this many months in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It will remove the weakness from your body in the name of Jesus. Amen. It will remove arthritis from your bones in the name of Of Jesus. Amen. This will correct it. 
every abnormality in the organ. of your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This water you are drinking will bring peace to your body. Amen. Amen. For somebody who was not sleeping well in the water, you begin to sleep well. Amen. Amen. In the name of God the Father. Amen. The Son. Amen. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somebody shout the loudest amen. Amen. Now, are we ready for the lecture now? All right. Quickly. This magazine in my hand. We just concluded just about three days ago to still publish it. We, 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 we decided not to do so because of the expense. I don't know. I can see why many people are not writing books again. The cost of printing has gone to another direction. How many of you write books here? Okay, I'll cut, yeah. You should know now that it's terrible to print a book. I, I, I canceled it because the cost they were giving me, this magazine, we have been printing magazines before. Three, three printers, where's Pastor Ephraim there? Pastor Ephraim. Okay, he went out. All right. Okay, so the press. Now, Three printers were consulted. The first one said it would be 1.6 for just 1,000 copies. It means 1,600 to produce it. Another one said 1.3. Only one person who agreed to print it about 1,000, which means if it, is, if, if it comes out with that price, there's no one that does business that is not expecting some profit, even if it's one error. We can't sell it for 1,000. There must be an addition, so we can. So if we are to sell it for 1,000, it means we who brought the information together, there is no compensation at all. And God is not happy. It means only the printer that does the printing that took the game, brought the, downloaded the message from heaven, and has sleepless night meditating. There's no game. Oh, that is rain. Somebody celebrate God. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. This must be God. Somebody celebrate God again. Hallelujah. This must be God. Usually, I give people opportunity to sow into jobs like this. And such opportunities have, have always attracted testimonies. Anywhere I do it, people must share testimonies.
There was a young man. I, I ministered in uh, Amaba. And I brought out my book. Not that I don't, I've already printed it, so I'm not looking for money to print it. I said somebody should just take care of the publication. A young man just walked out and just transferred the 100,000 right inside the hall for the book. That was Christ's generation. Not knowing that they have already told him the contract they gave him, he should stop. They canceled his contract. As he got back home, before the following morning, the contractor who canceled his contract phoned him early in the morning that he should go back to site. His contract has been restored. It's amazing. So, things like this. I just want 100 people, just 100 persons. In the midst of poverty in the country, poverty in the land, 100 people that will just, you won't pay 1,000 to the printer. We are paying the printer. There's no gain here. You want to sow seed of 10,000? Let me get 10 people or 20. I'll give you now, and, I'll, and I believe that whatever is written about you will be read. Everything God wrote down about you, the word will read it. The, the word will read your book. Your book will not be hidden. The word will read your book. Your book will not be hidden. Your book will not be covered. We want to put the account detail of, please just put the Zenith account detail there. 10,000 is a risk in this season where money is difficult to find. Money is very difficult. But for those who belong to the kingdom, uh, write it there, Samolusaga, Zenith Bank, 100-1857. One hundred, one thousand, eight five, five seven. Zenith Bank. One hundred, one thousand, eight five seven. Zenith Bank. One hundred, one thousand, eight five seven. Please give me some, give me some of the magazine. Let me give to these ones and just say a word. Bring some magazines. If you have your money here, you can drop it. If you don't have it, you can transfer. Our media department, please help me with. Uh, no, Zenith. 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 Okay, okay. 100, 1857. I think you are right. My father. They are sowing 10,000 instead of paying 
1,000. Lord, let their sacrifice open their book in the heart of men. Let somebody discover their usefulness. Let somebody suddenly remember their relevance. Let somebody suddenly discover why they will need them. Let the book of their relevance be opened. The Bible said, the king Ahasuerus said, bring me the book. And they opened the book and they read where Mordecai has been useful. Ah, who is this man? Bring him. I discover, I, I declare by revelation, these people were sacrificing these tenters. Let people that they need discover their relevance by revelation. Amen. Please, you see, I'm not rushing to pray. I'm taking my word because I, I want to know what I'm praying about because you will share testimony. Father, let somebody that needs, that they need, somebody that they need, let the person have access to their relevance. Amen. By revelation, let somebody that they need discover their book of destiny. Amen. And be attracted to them. Amen. Father, let somebody go Amali Kete Farah, Zagwayando Zivari Kaklete, Loperente Ri Paragus, Zuvri Ladabo Sevlegebos Kanama. Let somebody read their book of destiny. Father, let somebody discover. What will invite them into their life? Let the person that they need have an encounter by revelation in the name of Jesus Christ. Gabarando separata. As a baguayando live Let there be a supernatural advertisement. Amen. Father, let somebody come into the advertisement of their destiny. Amen. You know, you cannot give what you don't have. No, you can only give what you have. If you want to sow into a man's life, check what he has. I have the grace of supernatural advertisement. If you check very well, people always see me in their dream. And they will be connected to me. Big man. Somebody, oh, last, uh, last month, I'm sure the person should be watching online now. He said, Daddy, I had a revelation. You walked into my dream. And you said you need one million. Is it true? I said, yes. He said, I saw it yesterday, dream. Please send me your account number. And he wired one million to me. His name is called Frank. Let me mention this. He's from US, United States of America. I didn't go and meet him to beg for He saw me in a dream a day before. He said, Daddy, you appeared in my dream. And you looked at me and said, I need a million. If my father needs a million, what am I doing? He transferred, he said, give me. And he did it within a few minutes. Because he saw me, I have that grace of supernatural advertisement. Many years ago, which I've told you before, a woman in America, by then I've not started traveling to America, who was sick. The husband 
was a doctor. The sons are doctors. And for all the years, they couldn't treat. An angel went to America and appeared in the hospital and said, this sickness can never go except through one man. His name is called Samuel Osagai. Many years ago, I have not even got visa to America. And they were looking for me. They used three months to look for me. That is the, the grace I carry. Supernatural advertisement. And I'm praying for you that as you take this small magazine, it's small now, you will tap into that grace. Amen. That somebody you need will dream of you. Amen. The Lord will advertise you to somebody you need. Amen. I will say it again three more times. God will advertise you to somebody you need. Amen. You, you, you heard the testimony just now. An angel went to Calabar and wrote the address of Osagai and said, Go on, I'm not sent to, to help you. Pastor Samsara is sent to help you. And that's how I have this divine grace of supernatural advertisement. You know the man, uh, Justin from Ekpoma, who, who testified of breakthrough, who was begging, who had eight members in his church, who is now building. Now, that guy was in, uh, what do you call him? Ekpoma Hill. Is he here today? Uh, look at him. I, I don't lie. I, I just want you to know it. I don't lie. Now, he went to lock up, fasting and praying, fasting and praying. In the middle of the night, the Lord appeared to him and said, your problem of poverty, stop praying. Go and look for my son, Samuel Osagai. And he got up around one o'clock in the night. He was knocking at the door of other pastors who went to fast in, uh, what do you call that retreat? CPN. They said, you don't know Osagai? He said, I don't know him. I'm from Ekpoma. No wonder. Osagai is Baba Yehu. They gave him an honor. That's how his contact with me changed his life. I wasn't there. He got in contact by revelation. That's how my life is going. Everyone reasonable who entered my life came in by a counter. And I'm dedicating that mantle on you. That this small money, this small 10,000 that you are paying now, it gives you access to this grace. Amen. Receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Kadamusi kaparandos. Zikla Gakwashete. That those you need, we have a revelation to look for you. Amen. In the name of God the Father. Amen. In the name of God the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please, you receive from me. Don't forget it. It's your mantle. Don't give it to somebody. Just keep it around. Use it to remember that this is your mantle. Those you need, they will have revelation. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a, I will make sure I don't take from any person. Uh, it must come from me. The matto fell from Elijah, not from uh, 